We're going to begin in the book of Mark, chapter 11. Throughout the Bible, we are compared to trees. There are different places throughout the Bible where we are compared to trees. And uh, I want you to use that analogy this morning as we look at these few scriptures that God has given me. I talked about uh, just a little bit ago how that if we're going to really reach people for Christ, then we have to be what we need to be in order to be able to reach people for Christ. You know, we need to bring forth fruit. And uh, that fruit is not just putting your money in the offering. That fruit is not just going to church, singing a song, doing this and doing that. What is the fruit of our labor? It is souls. That's what it is. And we need to bring forth fruit. In the book of Mark, chapter 11, I want to break down in verse 11. The Bible says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came that happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Jump over to verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. As I said, throughout the Bible, a lot of times we are uh, compared to trees. The analogy is used that we are trees, and we are trees that are to bear fruit. And this scripture here is talking about a literal tree, a fig tree. Uh, but if you take note in this scripture, and I've wondered about this often, it said that Jesus saw this fig tree uh, as he was going down the road. And he went up to it, hoping that there would be a, a fig on it. But there were no figs on it. But then the Bible says this, because the time of figs was not yet. It wasn't fig season. Why would Jesus go up to that tree and expect to get figs off of it if it wasn't fig season? And I, I often wondered about that. And I've heard different things that uh, he is talking about Israel, and it's not their time yet because the Gentiles had to come in. Uh, but that's not what God gave me as I read this and as I looked at this. He, that tree looked like it should have fruit on it. There were leaves on it. Uh, it was uh, uh, healthy, and, and the leaves were coming out. And Jesus came up to this tree uh, looking to have a fig on him. Now, I want to tell you something. Uh, a lot of time, as I said, we are compared to trees, and a lot of time we look good. Uh, we look like we should be bearing fruit. We go to church. We put our money in the offering. We say the right thing. We do the right thing. Uh, but those are leaves. We are supposed to be bearing fruit. And what did I say before we got into the scripture? What is our fruit? Our fruit is souls. We need to be bringing forth souls. And a lot of times we are not bringing forth souls. And as I look at this scripture and I see that he came up to this tree. And it wasn't having any fruit on it, but it sure did look good. And that's how we are a lot of time. Uh, but when he went up to there when there's no fruit on there, that did him absolutely no good whatsoever. It could have been the best looking tree in Jerusalem. It could have been the best looking tree in Israel. It could have had the right shape. It could have been healthy. It could have been just filled with uh, bright green leaves. But because there was no fruit on it, it did him absolutely no good. And so because there was no fruit on it, on it. it says that he cursed that fig tree and he said there'll be no fruit on you from here on out forever and the next day when they come by they saw that it was withered up it was dried up it would no longer produce any fruit you probably know where i'm going but i want you to think about that uh, there has to be a reason that this is in the Bible. I don't know that it's talking about Israel. He may be. Uh, but as I say uh, many, many times, uh, the Word of God is multifaceted. It can talk about ten things at the same time, depending on what the Spirit wants to bring forth to you. Uh, so remember this, and we're going to jump over to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 13. I'm going to break in at verse 6. It 
Luke 13, verse 6, he spake also to this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and saw fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. And so again, here, uh, what is Jesus talking about? He's not talking about an actual orchard or a vineyard. Uh, he's talking about people. And he's talking about a certain man had a fig tree in his orchard or in his vineyard. And he comes seeking fruit on that thing uh, for year after year after year after year, and there was never any fruit on it. Now, I want to submit to you, uh, just out of my own reasoning and my own thinking, this wasn't a dead tree or he wouldn't have left it stand for three years. It was probably like that fig tree that Jesus cursed. It probably had leaves on it. It probably looked good, uh, but there was no fruit uh, being produced on this tree. Uh, so the guy let it go for a while, and then he'd come along and he said, I've been checking and I've been checking and I've been checking, and there's no fruit on it. Cut it down. It's just cumbering the ground. It's just taking up space. It is useless to me. It is no good to me. Uh, and again, I'm going to remind you, though you know, he's not talking about trees. He's talking about people. And he is saying uh, that this person is not bringing forth fruit. And because this person is not bringing forth fruit, it is no good to me. And because it is no good to me, I want you to cut it down and to get rid of it. Now we go back to what I read at the beginning, that Jesus cursed this fig tree because there was no fruit on it and was doing him no good. That thing withered up and died. Uh, this guy comes to his orchard or his vineyard, and this tree has not been producing fruit for a long time. And he said he's finally tired of it. He wants it cut down. He wants it out of the way. He wants to get rid of it. And again, I want to remind you. This was not a dead tree, or it wouldn't have been standing there for three years. If it was a dried up dead tree, he would have cut it down long ago. It must have looked good. And I'm going to tell you something. We as Christians, a lot of time, can look good. We can sound good. Uh, we can do all the right things. We can have, uh, go through the motions. We can say the right thing. But I'm going to ask you a question. How much fruit are you producing? If we're not producing fruit, of what value are we to the kingdom? I'm of great value because I'm a great person and God just loves me. Yes, he does love you, but he expects something from you. And the Bible will back me up on this. I can take you throughout the word of God and show you that he expects something from you. And these couple of scriptures that I read tell us what he expects from us. He expects fruit from us. And if we're not producing fruit, then we're of no value. Is Jesus going to curse us and we're going to dry up? Is he going to cut us down and remove us? I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You let the Spirit speak to you uh, about what he is saying to you concerning these scriptures. Uh, when I read these things, that's kind of a scary thing to me. If I'm of no value to him, what is going to happen to me? Again, I'm just telling you what the Bible says, and you do with it what you will. And I want to submit to you, and if I make you mad or I get on your nerves or I bother you, you can tell me so. But I want to submit to you, uh, there's a whole lot of us sitting in this very building uh, that aren't producing fruit. We're not. I'm not pointing fingers at any particular person. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. Uh, but I can tell you that there are people in this building that we are not producing any fruit. And if we're not producing any fruit, then we're of no value. What good are we? What is going to happen to us if we don't produce fruit? Well, this tree in the vineyard, the guy wanted to cut it down, uh, but there came along uh, the guy that worked for him. It says, <coughs> he saw fruit there and he came to the dresser of the vineyard. And told him to cut it down. But the dresser of the vineyard said, just give me a chance. Let me dig around it and dung it and then see if it'll produce fruit. And I believe uh, that God it does that with us. He gives us another chance. 
Uh, but in order for this tree to produce fruit eventually, something had to happen. It had to receive fertilizer. It had to receive nutrients. It had to re receive something that would cause it to bring forth fruit. Uh, I make this comment this morning here that we need a burden for the lost. Uh, that we need a desire to see lost people saved. We need something that will compel us to bring forth fruit. If we don't have that burden, if we don't have that desire, we're not going to bring forth fruit. We're not going to be out there and trying to win the loss. So something has to happen in order to give us that desire, in order to fertilize us, give us what we need, in order to make us bring forth fruit. Uh, so the vine dresser here, the guy that was uh, his foreman, if you will, whatever you want to call it, uh, said, let me dig around and dung it and then see if it will bear fruit. So he cried out uh, for uh, that tree, asking for an opportunity and a chance. And as I said, I believe God does that. And I believe, and it's not... Please don't think I'm talking about me. I believe that when we gather here and we hear the word of God, that's what God is doing. He's trying to fertilize us. He's trying to give us what we need uh, to bear fruit. But unfortunately, a lot of time, uh, it's, we're not pulling it up in through the root system. You know, if you've got hard ground around a plant and, and this plant is drying up and this plant is dying and you go out there and you do just dump some water on it, most of the time that water will just run off and it never gets to the root. Are you saying we're hard? No, I'm giving you an analogy. You let it speak to you however it speaks to you. Uh, but what do you have to do in order to get that water to the root? You have to break up that ground. How many times in the Bible, I can think of at least two off the top of my head, where it says, break up your fallow ground. What does that mean? You need to realize what you need. And you need to make yourself a, a, a vessel that can receive what you need. You need to put these things first in order for it to be able to get to the root. I say these kind of things over and over and over again. And if it gets on your nerves that I repeat myself, I'm sorry. Uh, but a lot of times what we do is we hear the message, we hear the word of God, and we're sitting there like this, and then we're just all pumped up, and we go out of here and not one thing changes. Because we haven't broken up our foul ground. We have to uh, make that effort to take in what God is trying to give to us. Uh, it does no good to dig around it and to uh, fertilize it if it doesn't take it in. If it doesn't get up into the branches, if it doesn't get up into the heart of the tree, it does no good. So what is it? that we need in order uh, to get us to that place where we can absorb what it is that God wants to give to us and once we absorb what it is that God wants to give to us that we can begin, begin to produce fruit. What is it we need? It's the Word of God. That's what it is. I, I, I kind of picture, and that's why I said that it's not about me, but I kind of picture uh, that as we gather here and I stand up here and give you what God has given me, I'm that vine dresser. And I'm trying to give you what it is uh, that will enable you to grow, that will enable you to flourish, that will enable you to produce fruit. I myself have to receive it too. Uh, but it's kind of that picture. And, and I want to go to the book of Psalms. And, and Psalm 1. And, and again... I want you to get this. He's not talking about trees. He's talking about people. Jesus used parables. Uh, Jesus painted pictures. Uh, the Bible does things like that to try to help us understand what it is that he's talking about. And so we know he's talking about people. And we are people. We are children of God. And we need to receive the word for what the word is saying. The book of Psalms, Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, 
nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. Okay, this is talking to people too. And I, I don't think that any of you are walking in the counsel of the ungodly or standing in the way of sinners or sitting in the seat of the scornful. I don't think you are. But here's the part we need to get. But his delight, his delight, what makes him happy, what gives him joy, uh, what tickles his innards, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. What is the law of the Lord? This is the law of the Lord. This should be our delight. In this we should meditate day and night. We should be in this word. We should be eating this word. We should be drinking this word. Because it is this word that will help us to grow. It is this word that will fertilize us, if you will. It is this word that will us provide the nutrients that we need in order to become fruitful. If we get in this word and it becomes our delight and we meditate day and night, something happens. What happens? Next verse. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. I want to stop there for just a minute. Uh, we went back to the first one that I read where the time of figs was not yet when Jesus came by. It wasn't fig season. Uh, this says uh, uh, that, the man that the man or the woman that delights in the law of the Lord and meditates in it, he will bring forth his, seed, uh, his fruit in his season. When is my season? Uh, that thing back when Jesus cursed it, it wasn't the season. A lot of times we say it isn't the season, and that's why we're not producing fruit. Uh, we say it's not time. I can't do it on the job. I can't do it with my family, or my family will never speak to it. It's not the season. For a child of God, it's always the season. It's never out of season. A lot of time we're not producing fruit because we say it's not fruit season. Like that fig, the time of figs was not yet. It wasn't the season. Uh, we say uh, that I can't do it at the job. I can't do it in this particular gathering. I can't do it uh, in this situation. What are we saying? It's not the season. I'm going to tell you something. As a child of God, it's always the season. Now, you don't want to be how many of you ever watched The Wizard of Oz? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be like the apple trees on The Wizard of Oz. You don't want to be whipping your fruit at them. You remember the apple trees that throwing fruit at them? You don't want to do that. You do have to be careful how you approach some people. You have to let the Holy Spirit lead you. Uh, you have to let the Holy Spirit be the one who gives you the words and guides you how to approach people. You can whip your fruit at them and drive them away. That's right. You can push people away if you're not under control of the Holy Spirit of God. But it is always the season. If we are controlled and led by the Spirit of God, a word spoken at the right time, in the right attitude, from a heart filled with love, under the power of the Holy Spirit can make a huge difference. Whereas you may uh, get up on your stump and start preaching at them and condemning them for everything they do and just drive them away. Right. You have to be under control of the Spirit. You have to let the Spirit guide you. But it is always the season. It may not be the time to get up on your stump. It may be time to approach it a different way. But it is still always the season to produce fruit. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that if we are like this man, and I said, I don't think anybody here is doing the first part. Sitting with sinners and the ungodly and all of that kind of stuff, I don't think you're doing. But how many of us delight in the Word of God? I mean delight. Think of the Word. Not just like it. Not just go to it when I have a problem. Not just go to it uh, because I'm curious about something, but I delight in it. If I delight in it, I delight in peanut butter pie, and I'll eat all you can give me. If I delight in the Word, I want to be eating it all the time. I want to be in it. How many of us are really like that? What would cause us to be like that? Two things that, I, that God has given me right now. First,